Hey guys, I want to give you an updated video on monitoring individual batteries in a large battery bank. And I did a previous video where I did use a different method to do this, but uh, what I've got here now is much more efficient and better than what I had posted previously. In fact, I'm going to be taking what I posted previously down because uh, this is so much better. All right, I have a fairly large battery bank. I guess it depends on what you call large. But there's 17 batteries in my battery bank. They communicate with a Life Power 4 communication hub I'm just gonna call this a LP4 communication hub through these two cables there's two ports for battery input for a BMS from a battery bank or a block of batteries but each port can handle up to 15 batteries so since I have 17 batteries I have to use two ports there's 15 batteries on this port and two batteries on this port. This LP4 communication hub then communicates back with my Solart master battery. Right here through this splitter and then into the CAN bus for the battery. Now my solar assistant is also connected to this cable. Um, and it marked back there, my solar assistant cable. And this is to my battery. Actually it's to the LP4 communication hub. And there is my solar assistant on a Raspberry Pi where I have both of my inverters that come in and then I have a USB hub cable that comes over to this USB hub and then I have two battery cables or USB to RS-485 cables that communicate from here back over to the battery banks on these splitters this is my port 1 which is 15 batteries and my port 2 which is 2 batteries and they're connected via this splitter one cable runs to the life power 4 communication hub from both of them and the other cable is a RS-485 to USB adapter cable to connect in the back and then run over here to this communication hub. Now I know these things are installed in locations that are not ideal but the cables come in pre pre-made uh, pre-cut lengths and this is how far they would reach so that's that's the reason this is where it's at it hasn't been a problem but the solar assistant will only allow you to communicate with up to 16 batteries at a time. And the reason for that is the address blocks here, the dip switches, there's only 16 unique combinations for a battery address. The LP4 communication hub limits that number of batteries to 15 per port because it doesn't allow you to use address zero so to communicate with these through my solar assistant this is my solar assistant screen uh, and we see that for and I'm, I'm connected to my port one 
So there's 15 batteries here. And in those 15 batteries, there's 3,200 watts being charged in. I have 9,000 watts of load. 13,000 watts of solar PV. So let's go see what this shows. Actually, let me go back there. I've already got this uh, pulled up right here on another tab. You can see my 15 batteries. And there's a pretty, pretty wide range of state of charge. And what I found that uh, if you're not able to fully charge your batteries from time to time, this difference in the state of charge between the maximum and the minimum will grow. Uh, and then at some point, depending on how you set your inverter up uh, for leveling the batteries or balancing the batteries, or once a month or so, it will actually balance itself out. Uh, I saw it do it one time and it was kind of weird. I thought it had a problem going on, but it was actually balancing itself. So there's 15 batteries. And my state of charges range from 60% down to 35%. So that's a 25% difference between the maximum and the minimum. And my battery bank is actually showing 45%. So there's a 10% difference between the minimum uh, battery state of charge and my bank state of charge and a 10% difference between the maximum um, no, that's actually 15% between my maximum and my battery bank of charge and my bank battery bank alright but now that does that only shows me 15 batteries and I have 17 batteries so how we're we gonna look at the other two batteries and this is what I found to be the easiest thing to do number one you'll have to have a separate cable RS uh, RS 485 to USB cable to split off from the communication wire that's going to your second set of batteries. And then it's just a matter of uh, disconnecting. Now it's helpful if you remember which all these battery ports are because you're gonna need that here in a minute. So I know that currently my two ba uh, 15 battery uh, communication is on USB 2 right there. And USB 3 is going to be for my two batteries. So let's disconnect. Let's pick USB 3, reconnect save it now connect okay now we should be able to come over here and see what we got there's pack one at 48 percent pack two at 49 percent well we're gonna have to refresh this There we go. So there's the battery 16 and 17. And that's these two batteries right down there on the end. So that's what I've found to be the easiest way to do this. And doing it this way, I can actually monitor or even change check my batteries all 17 of them from my phone by simply doing this i disconnect 
then I changed the port so USB 2 I save it and I connect now I'm gonna wait just a little bit well you got to wait for it to connect but once it's connected uh, solar assistant will be polling each one of these individual batteries and it will update its status uh, in the software and I think it's like two seconds or three seconds something like that between poles so you probably you need to wait about 45 seconds to a minute once you you swapped over for say 15 batteries before you go check it because if you don't you're going to get a display that just not uh not as helpful so let's see what we got Six, pack seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, I should have waited a little longer. Uh, what I found, if you don't wait long enough, the graph compresses all this data in the same size as the two battery bank. Let's see if I can do a refresh, see if that'll fix that. Let's just see. There we go. So there we are. Now I can see the first 15 batteries. And this works good. You can do it from your phone, from your solar assistant, from your computer, wherever you want, whatever you want to use that you have the software. Or actually, it's a web-based, so you can check it from there. Even though you can actually run solar assistant without Wi-Fi, you can run it off Bluetooth, or you can actually set it up to run off your internal Wi-Fi and not go on the internet. I haven't tried that, but you can do it. There's some videos on YouTube that show you how to do that. Uh, Ian at Watch 24-7 has some videos on that. But this, uh, this cable, uh, RS-485, it's a USB cable. It is a special cable. And let's see. On the watch 24 7 web page it's this cable right here it's 49 dollars and this one works from a solar to the uh, easy four batteries you may have to have a different one if you're using a different type of inverter but uh yeah that's it previously i had used this right here which is a mechanical switch and I had it mounted right here, and I have one cable that went from here, one RS-45 to USB adapter that went here. And then it, from those splitters, I came into the, these two cables, and then I could switch between ports uh, or battery uh, communications using this AB switch. But it's much simpler, more convenient if you just buy an extra RS-485 to USB adapter cable. And then you can swap it in the software just like I was showing you. Okay, maybe that was helpful.